I really thought it was amazing that, you know, this amazing uh, access to culture, I really think that that's the basis for the creative revolution that we're seeing today on the internet. And, and when the big media corporations were saying that this is bad for artists, um, I, I, I just couldn't understand that. You know, I could, I could see a lot of my musicians' friends and a lot of my artists' friends, how they were selling less and stuff. And sure, I, I saw that and I saw all, this, all these problems, of course, for, for my colleagues and stuff, but still, I, my, my sort of main instinct was that this must be good and we must sort of, uh, you know, keep, keep this and try and, and find new ways of, uh, of keeping this. So that's why I was interested. But then I, then I bumped into one of the founders, uh, coincidentally, actually, at a, at a, uh, at a demonstration uh, against the surveillance law, so to speak, that was passed in Sweden in 2008. I bumped into Peter, uh, the main, the main uh, character here, and um, had a I had to sit down with him and heard some of his stories, and I was so fascinated by uh, by who, who are these guys? You know, the, the sort of vanguard of the anti-copyright movement and, and 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 the movement for for sharing culture. You know, which I thought was just amazing. You know, so when I heard their stories, which was you know from from pranks and trawling to you know to the Bush administration actually threatening the Swedish government, I I was just super fascinated, and I really wanted to tell the story. I have a couple of questions about the server farm. Were they uh, afraid of, uh, when you filmed the server farm, the secret location, did you do special things to like uh, hide where it really was? Were they not, not afraid of authorities like seeing those fans and like realizing where the location is? And are they still protected by the, the pirate uh, party so that the servers are still legal in Sweden? Well, in the film, uh, there's actually, um there's actually, what, three server halls. Uh, there's a little punky server hall in the beginning. That company went bankrupt a couple of years ago. There, then there's this sort of James Bondy cave, uh, you know, the Bond villain cave, where uh, the Piuna, uh, it's called, and it's in the central Stockholm. And um, that's where the Pirate Party hosted uh, the Pirate Bay and WikiLeaks. And then there's the, there's the third uh, server park, uh, the, the cave. Um, and. Um, the Pirate Bay servers aren't in any of these parks anymore, and uh, the last one I filmed was two years ago. So we sort of, uh, they were very cautious and I was cautious and, you know, my assistants had to um, sign, sign, <laughs> sign off that they wouldn't make it public and so forth. But they were very sort of, uh, they really let me in, you know, and, and they trusted me. And um, so they gave me access to these, to these caves. And of course I was super fascinated because yeah, well, visually, you know, it was kind of crazy that the pirates kept their gold in a, in a cave, you know, it, it, was, it was pretty amazing for me, so, so, um, but, but there has been some, there has been some, some real drama, like, lately, uh, regarding the actual hosting, and um, a couple of weeks, two weeks ago, a couple of weeks after the release of the film in Berlin, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the rights, uh, the Rights Alliance, which is the new name of the Anti-Piracy Bureau that we see here in the film, they sent a letter to the um, Pirate Party saying that we will sue you if you don't uh, stop giving access to the Pirate Bay. This is the actual scene in the film where, where Peter says that this is, we are getting some form of diplomatic immunity. So um, when this happened a couple of weeks ago, um, and uh, the, the, the Pirate Bay decided to move on to, uh, I think first, the Norwegian Pirate Party and the Catalonian Pirate Party in Spain. So they moved on from Sweden, and shortly after that, I think maybe last week or so, they were cut off from Norway. And then I, I think this is like last week's news, that uh, there was this uh, big, big blog post saying that uh, the Pirate Bay has moved to North Korea. and. Uh, which was then again denied yesterday uh, by the Pirate Bay themselves, saying that that was a hoax and uh, you guys, if you believe that, you should really, you know, stop being, uh, you know, stop, stop believing in what we say, you know, stop, you got to think for yourselves, be critical, Why the, how the hell could we post our stuff in North Korea? So the thriller sort of uh, lives its own life, you know, and, um, and I think also by saying this, I think the guys were saying like, you know, we're in it for the laws, if you thought we were in it for the money, then you might be wrong, you know. So, so the story continues. So, are there more characters other than the ones we've seen that have kind of started to take over for those guys? That 
event? Well, you know, the, I guess the Pirate Bay is like, a, they themselves, they describe it like a cluster of people, um, kind of based all over the world. And um, it's, it's like, a, yeah, it's a, it's a bunch of people. It, it isn't just the three guys we're seeing in the film. I have kind of a naive question. Yeah. Um, you know, the original copyright law in America was really designed to just be a few years long. Uh, opportunity for an artist to make something, profit from it, and then have it in the public and have it be part of the public good. Um, so piracy sites don't necessarily respect even a few years. So how would I, as an artist, make my money if, uh, from the fruit of my labor? Well, I, I, don't, I wish I had the answer to that, you know, and I think that uh, hanging out with these guys for five years has certainly um, been a, you know, it's, it's been a ride, and I, think, I just think that, well, I don't have an answer for that, you know, and I've, I've, um, I've given out my film for, for free with a Creative Commons license uh, that lets my audience share the film from, from day one, and um, I, I, to tell you the truth, I don't know. I hope that people will will pay for this film, uh, even though it's for free. And um, I hope that we can find new solutions and new business models that, that, uh, that let us artists, um, you know, make, make a living on, off our art, you know. But I, I think that one of the main problems uh, is that, you know, people aren't really, the, the, most companies aren't really delivering uh, the, the movies in, in the way that people want to consume it on, you know. People want to download it or stream it. That's how we want to consume stuff, you know. And we not if they don't offer it to us, you know, it's going to get pirated, you know. So I think that the best solution, of course, is to come up with a better, with a better, you know, way of giving it to the audience. I did have a friend who felt philosophically he must see this by BitTorrent. He never had done BitTorrent. And it took so long to download it on BitTorrent. He's saying, God, I wish it was on iTunes. I would have paid. It's coming up on Tuesday. <laughs> Tell them that. You know. <laughs> so yeah. So that's that's with this project. Uh, we for us for me it was really important to try to be kind of ubiquitous and try to be everywhere and, and uh, be on all platforms. Um, so that's why we released it uh, on the Pirate Bay, on YouTube, and on Vimeo at the same time as we um, as we sold it from uh, we're using VHX, this great new um, great new uh, platform. Uh, really filmmaker friendly platform and I think um, that that is that is what my experience is about you know trying to be everywhere and trying to get my film out everywhere and uh, I think that's not got, that's gonna be good for me in a lot of ways I think I think not just from seeing how many lost sales I have or whatever but instead seeing how many people who could make this journey with me and and, and you know see my film see my work that makes sense. Another question from the audience. Yes, please come to the mic. That would be, or we can repeat your question. Hi, and thanks for the film. Uh, just about thought. There's a lot of focus on illegal file sharing, and I think it needs to be pointed out that the great, overwhelming majority of artists now or previously have never ever made any money from record sales. They made money from playing live. And uh, the record companies have made a lot of money from record sales. But there's, there are a lot of artists who actually profit from having their stuff downloaded and file shared. Because for them it's just a marketing tool which enables them to play live much more. Uh, do you have any thoughts on, on the positive side of this? I mean, that you can actually share a song and have it downloaded by somebody in Taiwan, even though you're in Austria in like one second. And the power of this? Totally, that's the power of the internet, and that's the power of sharing, and I really think that that's, it's, it's, uh, it's super important to stress that the way that the audiences can connect with artists, it's, it's so powerful, and I really think that, that that must be, you know, emphasized every time when we talk about file sharing, that the, the internet is inherently good for, for that, you know, and since it's, you know, cost-free, and, and since people can really tie into that, I think it's, you know, it's it's enabled a lot of, you know, it's it's also enabled a diversity of musicians to, to come out since, you know, prior I think that the record companies had all these gatekeepers and A&Rs and, and so forth saying that your music works and your music works, but all you guys, you, you can't make music. And I think that when these streaming platforms came and, and people saw that, okay, they, 
oh, oh my God, people didn't want to listen to these, you know, 10% top charts that we were selling. They wanted to listen to all of this other music, really. You know, that that was that's been really proven with, uh, you know, Spotify and and but of these streaming platforms that, that have, uh, have this great diversity of, of, of music. So I really think, I really believe in the inherent power of sharing and I think it's great for artists. Thank you. I think that uh, you wind up creating uh, an image of the world and you have to decide if you are believing in the positive image of human nature or the negative image of human nature. Um, if I share what I have, will enough people say, yeah, I want to see more from that person. So I'll, you know, put in ten cents or ten dollars or you know a thousand dollars. Will this notion of all across all these platforms, free, available anywhere? But if you'd like to pay me something, please do. Um, you know, it could work. I'm not sure. I'm actually not sure if if that's like the model. I'm not sure if my experiment, my experiment with this film, you know, to put it out everywhere for free is like this is the model for every film. You know, my last film was a film about South African car thieves. And uh, I, I doubt that it would have uh, gained as much interest from the internet if I gave that out for free and if I, I, I made it available on all the platforms that I'm doing for this film. I think that every film uh, needs its own strategy. And I think that to, to sell the Pirate Bay movie um, and not give it out for free would have been um, unstrategic. I think I would have come across as a really sort of a filmmaker that didn't know my, my topic, my audience, or, or I, you know. So. Um, I'm not sure, you know, but I know that if I can prove that this works for me, other people can do it as well, you know, and I think that that's, that's the responsibility that I have, that, uh, you know, we, it, it's, copyright is not working today, so uh, we, have, we have to do new stuff, and, and that's, that's my, my sort of, uh, my wish that this will, will, will gain debate and also, you know, trigger other people to create tools. We need more tools, you know, this, this debate isn't over, you know, we're not... We haven't solved this thing, you know. There's, there isn't one solution, you know. We have to have multiple solutions. You know, artists. I, I don't think that artists before the internet came had like one way of making a living. You know, artists all over creative. You know, regardless if you're a writer or a musician or a filmmaker, whatever you are, you know, there hasn't been like one way for you to survive. You know, before the internet came either. So I just think we need more tools, and people need to think disruptive and, and uh, try and use the internet and, and fight for an open internet. I think that's that's. What drives me? Got just a couple of questions about the way you shot this. Are you the shooter on this? Yeah, movie? I'm the film. Yeah, I it's shot beautiful. 90 percent. I saw the film. Thank I mean, you so uh, much. Just yeah, I loved seeing that stuff in Laos. I loved all the intimacy. The access you had was amazing, and these moments that uh, where we see people in reflective moments, but you're using very formal camera technique. It was just gorgeous. So I'd love Thank to hear a little bit about so you know, how you were doing that. Well, uh, to me, uh, films is uh, films are about access. You know, films is. If, if, if people in documentaries don't tell secrets to the camera, I'm really not interested in the film at all. You know, I'm, I'm all about access, and I spend a lot of time with, uh, with, my, with, with people uh, to get close to people, and that's, I think that's, that's what I enjoy the most, so, so I can get close to people. That's, that's really what drives me, but I'm also a photographer, and I love uh, filming, and, uh, and this, this film about the distribution revolution was, uh, I guess, accidentally filmed with a video camera revolution. It's, it's filmed with three or four different cameras, ending up with a, with a revolutionary uh, Mark II, uh, Canon 5D, of course. And, uh, yeah, I, I just like uh, traditional <laughs> compositions, and uh, I love post-production, and uh, we, sp we spend a lot of time uh, on that. Thank you so much. We have uh, one more question. Well, uh, up, yes, please. How did you meet the Pirate Bay? How did you meet the Pirate Bay people? A friend of mine wrote this article about the FRA law, which was this uh, uh, sort of surveillance and anti-terror law in Sweden in 2008. We uh, we thought it was really scary because we live our lives online, and it was a law that basically gave the authorities right, the right to warrantlessly wiretap us. So we protested against that. My friend wrote an article. And um, he was called up by Peter, who was also doing a lot of work against this law, pro protesting against this law. So, um, so my friend called me up and said, like, dude, who are these Pirate Bay guys? You know, are, they, are, they crazy? are they Nazis? Are they eating babies? What are they? You know, they were, the, the sort of media picture was really sort of crazy. We didn't really know who they were. So he called me up and said, you know, come with me. 
uh, let's meet these dudes. So, um, so I went to this demonstration and that's where I met Peter. Five years ago. And so uh, this is the start of the American release, the official American release. Yes. Yeah, so uh, do you have some other festivals already lined up? Uh, yeah, there's a there's yeah there's a ton of things happening uh, right now. What's really, next? Well, well, next is actually I'm doing I'm doing my own independent tour in Sweden. Uh, I'm really inspired by some some Canadian American filmmakers. I think that you know um, a lot of people are saying that you know a film could never be shown theatrically if it's available online. I, I disagree. I think that going to a theater with your friends, checking out a movie. In a, in a space with a lot of strangers, that 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 is not a substitute to downloading a you know a, a MPEG you know an AVI in your in your sofa. You know, it's a totally different experience. So, so I'm also sort of connecting that with with my Q and A's and my talk. I, I do a little talk after the film and we have a discussion. And uh, I really think that um, that is a way forward for filmmakers touring with their films, just like musicians tour with their albums. You know? So. I'm doing a tour in Sweden right now, and then after that I'm going to Canada, I'm going to Belgium, I'm going to Moscow, I'm going to Tel Aviv, I hope. Yeah, I think, yeah. So it's a... And the next big project is not the film, but is this new... Uh, yeah, this the, next big, the next big project is, um, is the startup. It's, um, it's, a, it's a tool for filmmakers to uh, connect with their audiences. I know you guys, when you watch movies, you're probably Googling them, right? You're sitting there with your phones or your tablets or whatever. You know, like who's that actor? What's that word? Or we do that. I mean, every most people do. So, and and with this film, there was, you can imagine how much stuff is written about these dudes over the past ten years, and how much stuff they've done that I couldn't squeeze into this eighty-five minute movie. So I just wanted a way that was unobtrusive. You know, how can I watch this flick and still get like a Wikipedia link about this guy or this phenomena or whatever? So, so that's what we built. We built like a a feed of links that's being sent, time synced, so that when something happens on the screen, you get like an article in your on your um, on your you know second device, and it's up to you to ruin the film and watch it now, or check it out after the film. You know, so I think that's the most important thing. You know, that terrific idea. I can see a lot of applications uh, across a lot of fields. Education for sure. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, and. Uh, uh, we're, remember that this is a film and competition, and you can vote. Uh, so as you go out, tear that little piece of paper. And thank you for uh, where you're going to be. What's the next screening here? Uh, the next screening is tomorrow at uh, 11 o'clock. Okay. So tell tell your friends. Please tell your friends, and thank you so much for coming. Everybody.